afternoon, folks. Big Bo with RVs at Big Bo at Parkway RV Center. Got another really nice trade-in we're going to review today. We took this one in, I believe, Saturday or Friday or Saturday, and uh, folks traded this in uh, on a Class A. And it is a 2007 Thor Chateau Sport. It's a Model 29R. It has two slide-outs. 30 feet, six inches long at its longest point. That's bumper to bumper. It only has 28,000 miles. Got a 4KW on and generator running right now with 174 hours on it. Pretty nice one, guys. Had a lot of upgrades done to it. Folks have owned it for about four years. Came out of South Florida to uh, trade with us. And um, the reason they trade it is they have been using it recreationally for the past four years and they liked it so they sold their house and wanted a full time didn't want to do it in a class c they wanted something bigger so they traded for a class a and um for an 07 this thing is pretty nice and i've got a great price on it guys at 29.9 that's not a misprint that is the price and the reason it's priced like that because well being an 07 it's not exactly perfect um it has had a roof put on it in the past several years, but as far as we can tell, it was done right. We've walked on the roof, we've inspected it before we traded for it. It's all solid, no soft spots, a little dirty, uh, which you'll see here in a minute when I do a flyover with the drone on the roof. But we have walked every square inch of that roof and uh, my tech said it was solid as a rock. So it has been fixed. So don't worry about that. The only thing is when they did the inside repair, and I'll show you that on the inside, they uh, they used different color uh, paneling on the inside than they should have, which isn't bad, but to a trained eye, it's gonna be, it'd be pretty obvious that it's had the ceiling panels replaced, which that's the case most of the time when you have a, a roof that needs to be replaced. That's just to be expected. But besides that, it's in great shape. In fact, the people had no idea about the roof replacement uh, until I showed them. So that's how good they did. Whoever replaced the roof, that's how good they were. But anyway, guys, I mean, that's 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 normal, typical. You know, that's something that's going to happen with an older RV from time to time. You know, that's a pretty expensive uh, ordeal, too, to replace the roof. So you ought to be happy it's been done. That's something you don't have to worry about for a long time. So that's going to save you several thousand dollars having to do that. But looking around at guys, it does have a really nice power awning that works great. <clears throat> I haven't cleaned this up. This is just pretty much how it came in. But you see you've got a large pasture storage here in the back. Uh, a little storage there. They left you some valve extenders for the rear wheels. There's just some tire covers. Uh, they had the awning put on it originally had a manual awning. They stuck a power awning on it the outside entertainment center It is built on the Ford E450 chassis with a 6.8 Triton V10 305 horsepower 420 pound-feet of torque. I mean <clears throat> Everything looks good up here. You do have a little bit of D-Lam on the top of the cab over Delamination was probably related to the roof being repaired, but are being replaced. But it's dry as a bone now. Tires look great. They're late 2018 date code tires. They probably had them put on when they bought the coach and they still got plenty of treads, still got the tabs on them. Two slide outs, opposing slide outs. It's a 29R, is a great floor plan. And you can see guys, the stripes, the finish look great. No delamination here on the sides. They've made some nice upgrades. They put a second AC on it. They put the uh, uh, the uh, air springs on the back with a built-in compressor so that you can uh, soften or firm up your ride a little bit if you're towing something. 5,000 pound tow capacity hitch. Looks like they've added an extra bumper on the back. That's just access to your plumbing and your water pump in case you ever need to change that out. air lift air suspension which is an upgrade that i definitely recommend on any ford e-series uh when i actually put that on the i actually put the firestone version of that on my personal motor home on the front and the back huge difference in the way they ride and drive when you do that 
uh, 28,000 miles on the motor, on the whole motor home. And um, dash air is nice and, nice and cold. I mean, guys, for 29.9, this one's probably one of the nicer ones I've done in that price range in the past couple of years. I'm not gonna lie to you, this thing is really nice. Let's look inside. I know it's not gonna be perfect because it is a, a 16 year old motor home, but let me show you what they've done. They also took the carpet out of the main area and put the uh, uh, laminate floor down. They did leave you a couple of extra sheets in case you ever needed it. Uh, I put them in the cab over just for now, but they did a professional job on it too. Whew. Now I do have just one AC running. Now, this is what they told me is that they put both these air conditioners on. These are both very brand new, or not brand new, they're three or four year old Dometic. They were brand new when they put them in, but they put two new Dometic uh, AC units in this unit. It originally came with one, they added the second one. And that's why you see this conduit right here because they had to run a wire down here to the uh, new Dometic thermostat. And they put a matching unit in the back bedroom. Now, they had it set up where you could run both at the same time off the 4KW generator or 30 amp service by putting soft starts in both ACs. The soft start's still in the rear, but the one in the back and the front AC went bad. The AC still worked. In fact, it's blowing icicles right now, but the soft start went bad. So if you do want to be able to run both ACs off of 30 amp power, you will have to put you a soft start. If not, you'll have to turn one on or the other, but not both at the same time. Which to be honest with you guys, of course it's at 76 degrees today. It's not very hot. One is doing a fantastic job cooling the entire RV off. But that's something you, you can do yourself or not do. You know, I'm not, Something I like, you know, that's not really a factory thing, those soft starts, so I don't really want to say I recommend them or I don't recommend them because that's something that's not a factory built item by Dometic. So I'm, I'm not a big fan of putting a lot of aftermarket stuff like that on a air conditioner, but uh, I'll let you be the own your own judge of that. I've heard people say they're great and I've heard people say that it's, it's, uh, it's fried their air conditioner. So I've heard it from both, both directions, so I'll let you be the judge of that. I know long-term use, I've heard they're bad for them, but who knows? <laughs> but then I've heard people saying they've had them on for years and never had a problem with it. So anyway, but the front one, uh, I've just got the front one on now, it's blowing icicles. Uh, both front seats look great. You've got the, uh, got that really nice, genuine 100% invitation wood, uh, plastic wood uh, uh, dash cover. I mean, that's the real stuff right there, guys. 100% imitation wood, only the best. <laughs> power heated mirrors, uh, power windows, power locks. I do, it does, they did put a nice Vizio smart TV in. I've got it running off the hotspot on my phone and just running whatever's on the free channel. You do have a full, uh, this, is, this is your extra paneling for your floor if you ever need it. I do have, this does make a full size bed to a queen size bed. Here's what I'm talking about guys. Uh, you may notice, and this is something you can use too when you look at RVs. Notice how the paneling's different on the front, even from the ceiling. Um, that's because that's been replaced and you can never match the colors up exactly. So they have had to have that fixed. This panel has been replaced, this, this, and this. So they have had the Inside paneling replaced, which again, guys, is absolutely typical anytime you replace an RV roof that you do have to replace the inside paneling. This is the original one. This is what they replaced it with. You can see the difference in the texture. Again, guys, as long as it's done right, it's no big deal, but you're not gonna notice that unless you look for it. Uh, you do have a table booth that makes a bed, but that's again, but that's why I've got it priced for $29.9 and not $39.9 too. So you're going to reap the benefits from that and you'll never notice it unless I pointed that out to you. But again, guys, I point out the good and bad in used RVs. I don't sugarcoat anything. I tell it like it is. You do have a fold down sleeper sofa, a table booth that makes a bed, 
you got your bed up top here it's bigger than a full smaller than a queen so you're going to use queen size sheets uh this tv's on a swivel so you can put it out of the way um i'm gonna go ahead and crank the motor up i'm afraid it might cut the tv off when i do it but we'll see a lot of sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't 28,157 miles the radio off no check engine lights no warning lights yes we are going to drive it later in the video and the tv does stay on cool got some overhead storage there's a remote control a couple of some stuff they left in here for you there's your awning controls weird place for it but it was added on so i guess that's where they put it They did uh, recently install, the uh, microwave went bad. So they, uh, they spent a few hundred dollars and actually put a microwave, Dometic microwave and convection oven in. These folks spent some money on this RV. Uh, they spent a lot of money on it, um, maintaining it. They done a really good job too. I, I'm gonna give them credit for that. I, I'm, I'm really impressed with how they kept this thing. Uh, three burner stove top oven microwave oven and electric oven they did um install a magic chef all electric refrigerator but wait they installed an 1800 watt pure sine wave inverter so that you can power this refrigerator when you're going down the road if you did not want to run your generator they thought of everything guys that wasn't a cheap fix either and it's already it's already at operating temperature Go toward the back, it's a split bathroom like most Class C's. And you do have the RV toilet here, stainless steel sink, medicine cabinet. Shower. Oh, I'm sitting off, off the unlevel just a little bit here. Bleached a little yellow from the sun because it has been sitting out, but like I said, it's got a new roof, so uh, or a newer roof, so I don't think you got no worries there. Uh, TV back here as well. That's not a smart, this is a dumb TV, but it works too. Queen bed in the back. There's your optional second AC. Wall mount thermostat right there. Um, underneath it, they actually did a good job on this too. I mean, they didn't there is your uh, inverter so all that's good and of course some extra storage cabinets all that good stuff <coughs> like I said it's an interesting motorhome it's not just your run-of-the-mill 07 four wind Chateau 29R and of course, this is your gauge and control switch for your air spring ride, uh, air ride suspension. And again, guys, it's, it's not the one that you actually have to go somewhere with a compressor and run a hose out and fill up the air springs. This got is that this is one with an actual built-in compressor that you can raise and lower the air pressure while you're driving down the road if you want to, and you can adjust it to your taste. Um, I usually keep the rear on about 30 to 40 pounds, and if I'm towing something behind it, like a car or a toad, I'll usually put a little more than that in it. And that's a very, very good upgrade to any. You know, I, I like it on all four, or, or both axles, front and rear, but uh, at very minimum, the, the rear just makes a huge difference. Burr. That air feels good. I don't know if that's a 13.5 or a 15,000 BTU duct or, or roof air, but the way it feels, it wouldn't surprise me if it was a 15,000. I think it feels good. And uh, folks were just using this thing. I mean, they just spent the night in it the night before they traded it in, so refrigerator works airs work i had both i had the other the rear air on the other day, uh earlier today when i was going over it awning works tvs work 
slide outs work you know even though this unit's only 29.9 we're still going to do our major systems inspection so we're going to go through this coach make sure your major systems work your major systems are uh, slide outs we make sure they work like they're supposed to we're going to make sure generator runs puts out like it's supposed to we're going to make sure it drives like it's supposed to uh, we're going to make sure that the uh, SIP works like it's supposed to. Refrigerator freezer gets to operating temp. Uh, both roof airs get to operating temp. We're going to make sure that um, the plumbing systems all work. We'll make sure your hot, wa hot uh, your uh, water, hot, I was going to say hot water heater, but I've never heard of a cold water heater. If you, They're all hot water heaters. I mean, it's a water heater. <laughs> Y'all make sure your water heater gets the, gets the water hot. <laughs> I always, every time I hear that, like, well, I've never heard of a cold water heater. Why do people call it a hot water heater? It's a water heater. <laughs> but uh, your water heater, make sure it gets hot. It's a DSI. Um, we're gonna make sure all your, you know, your faucet, spigot, toilet, all that stuff's good. And there's no plumbing leaks. And uh, we had a pretty good downpour this morning, guys. And there's no signs of leaks in here. We've walked the roof, we've checked the seams. Um, I think the guys did just to make sure kind of sealed the corner up here even though it didn't show any signs of leakings but it, it did have a couple little cracks starting on the uh, sealant so we went ahead and just sealed the front corner the rest of the roof looked great but other than that guys uh i mean this is a nice motorhome and um it's easily worth more than i'm asking for but like i said um the way you know these panels are that's the only reason we're doing it for 29.9 that roof is solid is, is a brand new one i wouldn't worry about it but you know come look at it yourself if you don't believe me i want you to come look at it you know I, and that's the thing guys and i hadn't said this in a while but i never in when i started doing these videos back in 2010 i never intended them to replace you actually coming down here and looking at it in person I want you, you know, any used vehicle you buy, you need to come inspect it for yourself and or hire a third party inspection inspector. You know, I, I know that, hey, life gets in the way. You may live a long ways away like these folks that lived in South Florida, but they still came up and inspected the unit they were buying, um, which is the way you ought to do it. Or, you know, if you're going to take a chance, buy it sight unseen, at least at the very least, hire an inspector. Uh, RV inspector to come look at a used RV even a brand new RV guys. I recommend an RV inspector um, I think that's a incredible resource and not near enough RV shoppers take advantage of I Mean you're spending 30 grand on a used RV. What's a few hundred more dollars? Just to be safe and that, that that's as that and that way it allows us to be as transparent as we can possibly be the only thing that we inspect and guarantee to work are those systems that I mentioned earlier, the major systems, uh, you know, and I, you know, what I do for my viewers and my videos is I come out here and I spend a little bit of time in this RV, you know, I check the awnings, I check the TVs, I check the lights, even though those are not part of our standard checkouts, the things we normally check, but I still make sure that they work. And if they don't work, I'll tell you, um, but I make sure they work because that's one of those things that if they work, they work. They don't, they don't. It's sold. It's sold either way. You know, if they work, we sell it with them working. If they don't work, we sell it with them not working. You know, that's not going to affect your trip. You know, we concentrate on the stuff that will ruin your trip. Like a slide out's not working. That can ruin your trip. Or a plumbing leak can ruin your trip. Refrigerator, freezer not working can ruin your trip. Generator not working. Air conditioner's not working. Especially in the summertime, that can ruin your trip that's stuff we concentrate on you know if you've got a light bulb out here uh, a cabinet that's off track there or you've got a little cosmetic imperfections here and there like all used rvs have that's not going to ruin your trip guys we let you fix that stuff in other words we handle the major stuff we leave the mickey mouse stuff to you that's part of buying a used rvs all rvs need work you new used don't ever let anybody lie to you and tell you that RVs are a maintenance free thing because they are far from it. There's a lot of behind the scenes stuff to get an RV and use it. For those of you who are just getting into RVing or thinking about it, there's, they can be, they can be a headache sometimes. Um, you either got to know how to uh, work on them yourself or pay somebody to work on it. That's just the nature of them. 
And guys, before I forget, I forgot to show the roof shot. Let me pause the video real quick, show you the roof. And I apologize, I just got carried away with everything else. But you can see the roof to be an 07 looks pretty good, just dirty. We are gonna wash the roof and all that stuff, so don't worry about that. Uh, when, we, when we clean up the coach, I'm just, I'm shorthanded on cleaning help at the moment. And uh, we took this unit in and uh, didn't really have anybody here to wash it, clean it or anything like that. So, um, but it will be before it goes out. But what I was getting at guys is don't let, a salesperson tell you that even if you buy a brand new RV guys go ahead and plan on the first 12 months that you own a brand new RV three or four months is going to be it's going it's not going to be at your home it's going to be at a dealer service lot getting all the factory defects repaired that's just part of owning a new one it's, it, you know you go by any you know I, I drove by a ripoff world the other day and I when you go into the one around here you go by their service department it was jam-packed full of late model or i mean i'm talking about 22s and 23s that they probably just sold in the past few months all in there for warranty repairs some of them probably been sitting for months and that's you're going to be paying on that thing while it's sitting there waiting for its tur turn in line to get warranty repairs done on it that's just the nature of buying a new one through you know two months three months four months first year you own it, it it's going to be sitting at the dealership service department doesn't matter what you buy that's just the nature of buying a new one especially since the pandemic so be prepared for that if you're if you insist on buying a new one you can buy a used one and most of the bugs have been worked out yeah you may have to, you will do some work to it but not probably not near as much and the good thing about a used one is and not having a warranty you can take it anywhere to get it fixed and cash customers are always king when it comes to rv service in other words guys warranty companies uh, customers get put to the back of the line because the warranties take so long to pay if they do even pay most of them don't pay and they make the, the in fact a lot of places don't even fool with aftermarket warranties like if you take it to a lot of independent shops or even a lot of dealers and you've got an aftermarket warranty they won't accept it they'll tell you you got to pay for the repair and you deal with out of pocket then you deal with a warranty for reimbursement and guess what guys 75 80 percent of the time you won't get a dime out of that aftermarket warranty company all they do is is they they make it where they never have to pay a claim and all they want to do is sell the warranty but never pay a claim that's how they make money so uh i always say no to any aftermarket warranty which there's probably not going to be one available for an 07 anyway and if it was it wouldn't be worth a flip you're just blowing your money away you're just wasting it but what i'm getting at guys is get an rv inspector look at it or if you're familiar with rvs look at it yourself and i promise you guys you're going to get a nice rv it's got a it's got a newer roof uh tires are good you've got at least two or three more years on tires uh if you take care of them lot, the, the tire covers are on it so obviously they've been kept under cover um and plus they're 16 inch they're not really expensive i put a set of firestones on mine for 1200 bucks all six of them so it, it's not like they're 22 fives like on a class a or a diesel they cost three or four thousand dollars so but anyway i wouldn't change these in fact if you want to change these tires out go ahead let me know because i'll keep these and and uh put them on one of our trucks or something because there's still a few years left on these tires <laughs> but uh I think it's a lot of motorhome for $29.9. That, you know, if this is your price range and you're tired of looking at junk, you need to take a long, hard look at this one. I like the upgrades that's been done to it. A lot of these same upgrades I would have done myself. Um, and it's, uh, for the price, it's gonna be hard to beat. If you are interested, in the Chateau Sport, give us a call, 706-965-7929. Don't expect this one to be on the market more than a day or two. The Class C's are hot. They're selling like crazy. Uh, go through my videos for the past month 
and look how many class C's that I filmed in the past month and you'll see sold on most of them where they say sold 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 because they've already sold class C's are hot so in pretty much every motor home I posted doesn't matter if it's an A, B or C under 30 grand sales in a day or two um, I mean these folks I hate to see what they had in this coach luckily they paid cash for it when they bought it anyway guys um, call us if you're interested 706-965-7929. Now, what I'm going to do is I can do it in all my videos with motorhomes. I'm going to pause the video for a minute. I'm going to go bring the rooms in, lock, you know, bring the awning in, close everything up, and then we're going to get one of my salespeople to ride with us. We're going to take it for a test drive, see how it does, and then go from there. So hang tight, guys. I'm going to pause the video for a second, and we will bring these rooms in, and I will go over how that how that works on this particular RV. So the new owner, whoever buys it, will have that as a reference. And stay tuned. I will be right back. All right, everybody. We've got the uh, rooms in, and uh, pretty standard procedure. This one, though, you can actually leave the motor running. It doesn't hurt as long as it's in park and the parking brake set. So, uh, like always, you, before you do anything with the slide outs, you want to go outside and close all your bays and, and lock it, or la uh, latch them and lock them. Put your awning up, which I have. And then if, if this one's got slide toppers, you don't have to worry about this next step. But if your unit does not have slide toppers and you're, say, at a campground or parked underneath a bunch of trees or something like that, you probably want to climb up either on your roof ladder or your uh, step ladder and look on top of your slide outs make sure you don't have a bunch of sticks and limbs and debris that could damage your seal when you bring it in if you do just get you a battery powered leaf blower or uh, just a broom and sweep off the top of your slide out before you bring it in and after you do all that you come inside and i've got this slide out in and you can see guys it looks just like one without a slide would look like it's actually pretty cool how they got it laid out um, even though it's a lot wider with the mount, it's still plenty of space in here with the rooms in. Both switches are right here. Really easy to just bring them in. And until uh, they stop, as with any slide, no matter what it is, you bring it all the way in or all the way out. You don't. There's no in between. So um, bring them in till they stop. If you can't put your slide all the way out, then just leave them in that way that seal can connect to keep the rain out because if you don't if the slide out cannot connect against the wall solidly the seal like this seal right here cannot connect keep the water out and you've got an outside seal just like this on the other side of that wall that does the same thing and every slide out's been like that ever since they invented the slide out so anyway guys what i'm gonna do is get one of my guys to take a ride with us and be a cameraman and I will see you in just a second from the driver's seat. All right, everybody. Uh, now we're going to test drive this 07 Chateau Sport. And I uh, got my good buddy Shane going to be our cameraman and show him some love and give him a call or text if you've got an interest in this one. In fact, I, I think this one's going to sell by the morning. I got a prediction. So if, if you see this video tonight, give him a call or text on a sale. What's your number, Shane? It's 423. 347-8478. Yeah, make sure you get on line on this one because this is a lot of motor home for under 30 grand. I mean, that's pretty much a travel trailer price for a double slide, 28,000 mile, fully self-contained Class C. You don't see that hit the road. You don't see that hit the market every day. Not in the current market. Not with the way that everything's running right now. And maybe somebody would be so nice to let us out. Maybe not. Yeah, well, like I think they want to. Gotta give them the thank you way. Yep. Easy road.
tires ride smooth. People drove it up from South Florida. I think it was uh, 800 miles to bring it up here to trade. So I don't think they would have brought it up here if it didn't. If it wasn't a good one. Bad. We're gonna take it up the interstate, see how it does. I mean, it's not the 362 horsepower, but 305 is still plenty for a 30 footer. This is a great size for older parts, state parts, though. The 5.4 that's 6.8. Got a good cold dash here. And we're gonna take it up the interstate. See what she gets up to. I don't think it'll be a problem hitting 60. vibration in the front tires. They might need to be rebalanced, but other than that, shifts good, brakes good. That's the only fault so far that I can find with it. Cruise control works good, by the way. the brakes more here. Yeah, rotors feel great. Good pedal. Yeah. I guess guys, if I had defaulted, I just got a little bit of a vibration from the tire from the front end. Well, I feel like it is. But yeah, guys, other than that, heck, no check engine lights, air is cold, dash air is cold. For $29.9, I don't see how you could go wrong on this one. If you're interested in it, give Shane a call or a text. What's your number, Shane? 423-347-8478. Come check it out for yourself. Uh, see what you think about it. I would advise calling pretty quick. I don't think this one's going to last long. Thanks again for watching, guys. Smash us a thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And uh, look forward to seeing you here in beautiful Ringgold, Georgia.